If you guys are bored and you need some new games, then I highly recommend G28.com. The link is in the description below. Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to the first part of the review for the second January DLC pack for Forza Motorsport 6. And obviously, we are kicking off with the best, it feels really, really weird saying that, <laughs> the best car from the pack. It is the Pontiac Aztec. This is one of those cars which is kind of like you love it or hate it and it's so bad it's good kind of way. Plus, the obvious reason why I'm driving it first, and as you can see by the colour, it is Walter White's car. Science, bitch! I told you I was going to say that. Science, bitch! So we've brought this thing to Sonoma. Kind of wanted to do this because the elevation changes on this track, and considering the fact this thing only has around about 185 horsepower, it might struggle. So yeah, let's rev it up, see how it sounds. I don't think it will sound that great, but let's try it and see. Sounds like a freaking diesel, man. <laughs> anyway, let's get going. Feel that acceleration! Holy shit! Okay, so coming up to the first corner, 64 miles an hour. Mind bending speed here, guys. I never felt acceleration like this. Understeer, Christ almighty. I'm not even going that fast that it's understeering. <laughs> what the fuck? Up to the second corner. Oh my god, it felt like it wanted to flip over there. Jesus Christ, the body roll is strong with this one. Holy moly, man. But obviously, I can't do this review without talking about Breaking Bad. Seriously. I'm <laughs> I'm surprised and very glad that Turn 10 brought this in. I mean, I know you might be thinking, say what now, but this car has basically became a lot more popular due to Breaking Bad. I mean, before Breaking Bad, it was kind of... Well, it was one of the worst cars in the world, and don't get me wrong, it still is, right? But it's just got a character to it now, if you know what I mean? Since we've seen it on the screen and everything with Ryan Cranston driving it, it's, it's just a cool car, man. It's not cool in the sense of, oh my god, it looks fantastic, or it drives well, but just the fact that it's been on TV just makes it cool. It could definitely use some tweaks on the suspension and the anti-roll bar front. It's a freaking hippo, man. It is quite bouncy. I'm turning the wheels as much as possible for flipping hell. Onto the main street. Feel the power! All 185 horsepower of it. 210 pounds for your torque. This thing does weigh 3,923 pounds, 0 to 60 in a blistering 10.8 seconds. It's got a top speed of 115, so it's not the fastest thing ever made, as you would expect. <laughs> I just, whoa, God. It's just fun. I mean, to think a car like this is actually in a game is incredible. Seriously, I really hope they bring this in to Horizon 3. I know, what, I know what the comments are going to be saying, like, why are you so attached to a Pontiac Aztec? Breaking Bad, Joe. Just Breaking Bad, that's all I'm saying. I mean, this car kind of applies to that sort of weird petrol head feeling. I mean, it's not necessarily a car which everyone likes. It's not necessarily the best car in the world ever. Well, it's one of the worst, as I said, right? But it's still fun and it's still got that personality to it, as I says. It's... It's what us petrol heads look for. A right laugh in our cars. Let's see if we can get a little bit sideways. Wrong idea. Fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was a bad idea. No, no, no. Did it fare the damage? Nope. It's kind of bashed up a bit. Shit will buff out, though. So that about rounds it up with the Pontiac Aztec, guys. I think this is a cracking car to come into the game. Seriously. I mean... I'm going to get spammed in the comments for saying that, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean, though. So, moving on to the next car. So, we've hopped on over to Lime Rock Park, guys, to test out the Sunbeam Tiger. This was a genuine surprise for me when I seen this in the trailer, because I've always wanted a Sunbeam, like, car to come into Forza. And it's a really, really cool pick. I added a little racing stripe onto it and everything with the number 80, because it did look a little bit plain without it. But yeah, this thing sounds a lot different than you would expect. Partially because it has a V8. Listen to this thing. Yeah, 
I bet you weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> that is mental. So let's get going with this thing. Not bad acceleration there. It's okay. Now, I chose Lime Rock because I think this is one of the best tracks for these little, like, convertible classic cars and everything. Well, this one isn't really little. I'm comparing it to the Datsun 2000 Roadster. So I tested that out on this track as well, but this track is kind of good for these sorts of cars. Whoa, whoa, god, I feel like it was to oversteer. Now, it's only got 200 horsepower and 282 pounds feet of torque, so it ain't Ferrari levels of power, as you would expect. It feels quite weighty, though. It does feel quite weighty. It is 2,560 pounds, so it's a lot lighter compared to the Aztec. A lot, lot, lot lighter. Still a lot of body roll, obviously. Keep going. There we go, that's the oversteer. <laughs> yeah, let's see if we can get it sideways for this long sweeper here. Holy shit! That is pretty good for only having 200 horsepower. God, look at this interior though. <laughs> wood for days, bro, wood for days. Oh my god. Now, I'm trying to get it turned in normally, but it's just wanting to oversteer. I kind of like it for that reason. It's actually a lot faster than I expected. So I looked at the numbers, I'm like, it won't go really that fast, will it? But 0 to 60 in this thing is 6.7 seconds and a top speed of 138 miles an hour, so it's quicker than I expected. This is a really cool version of this track. It's kind of like the alternative version. Very good, along with them little corners there and the little kind of hairpinny section up here. Break, 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 break. Might come in there a bit too fast. Ooh. Oh, that's it. Woohoo! It's just a happy car, this. It's a really, really happy car. It's just like, yeah, get me sideways. Let my V8 roar. It's, it's fun. Okay, coming back around the other way. God, it handles that corner so well. I know I said that before, but damn, it's good. It's very, very good. I can only imagine what this thing would be like if you actually do a proper drift build on it. Let me know in the comment section below guys, uh, do you actually want to see some builds of the cars that I'm going to be reviewing, which is all of them. <laughs> there we go. Unlike the Aztec, we can actually do donuts. Yes. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. This has to be the surprise of the pack for me so far. I mean, I was glad that Sunbeam have come in, but I didn't expect it to be this good. So yeah, might do a build on it as I says guys, but moving on to the next car right now. Next up is the Subaru SVX, and this is a very strange car for Subaru. Normally we're used to like Impressas and stuff. It kind of reminds me of like a Subaru version of the Alpha RZ Zagato or Zagato RZ. If you know, it has that sort of styling about it, that sort of unusual styling than you would see from these companies. But yeah, I think it generally looks pretty cool. I'm not really a big fan of like. The, the window styling, but apart from that, it looks not that bad. So let's hear how she sounds. Now, obviously, it doesn't have that signature Subaru sound, but it sounds good nonetheless. So, we're on Mazda Laguna Seca, guys. I had to come here for one of the tests. Fantastic, fantastic racetrack. My favourite in the world. I know it pretty well, so break down into second gear. I don't know why I trumped into first there. I was too eager with the buttons, man. Now, I honestly think they should have renamed this pack the under 250 horsepower pack, because the past few cars we've been driven has under 250 horsepower. This thing is only about 230 horsepower and it's got 228 pounds feet of torque. For it being front wheel drive, it does get turned in pretty well. It's not that bad. It's pretty decent. Coming up to the corkscrew, this will be the ultimate test of this. It understeers like an absolute pig like the Aztec. So break about here, in a second. Ooh, missed the apex a little bit there. There we go, not bad. Not bad at all. Keep her going through the long sweeper. Oh god. <laughs> I think that is the corner that you know most on this track if you went too fast into it. 
You see, shit, the car just freaking careers right on. Going to the main street, let's see what we can get in terms of speed. Come on. Can we get to 100 at least? Come on, please. Please, I beg of you. We'll jump into the interior now. Still going, still going. There we go, 100. Not the quickest accelerating car in the world. Let's see if we can do a major flick here. Off the gas. It was okay. It's so, okay, I would love to see this thing with like an all-wheel drive version, if you know what I mean, or like all-wheel drive conversion. I might actually do that if you guys want me to. Make like a rally build on it, that'd be awesome. I'd love to see some old Subarus come back. This was a great addition. I'd like to see like an old version of the Outback or something. The, maybe the Forester. Just one of these ones that kind of stands out. Oh god. <laughs> then we'll head round the other way, see how this thing fares get up the corkscrew. Let's hope its nose doesn't scrape off the actual tarmac. It's not that low to the ground, man. It's not a Ferrari or anything like that. So, here we go. Break a bit. Up the side. And round we go. It's okay. Lost a lot of speed on the exit there though. The one thing you might be surprised to know is that the Sunbeam Tiger that we just tested actually gets to 60 quicker than this thing, because that can get to 60 in 6.7 seconds and this can do it in 7.3s now. I never expected that. Well, that thing is lighter than this. This is 3,580 pounds and that is 2,560 pounds. So the weight reduction, bro. <laughs> The weight reduction makes all the difference. Don't get me wrong though, I can see this thing actually doing pretty well in races if you upgrade it and tune it right. But moving on to the final car for this part of the January DLC, the Mercury Cougar XR7. And here it is, look at this thing, it looks very very mean indeed. Obviously it kinda looks like the wide body racing RX7 that we got uh, a couple of packs ago actually. It even has RX7 in the name but spelt the other way around. It's the XR7. But yeah, we're gonna see how this thing sounds before we get going. Pretty beastly. Definitely pretty beastly. Now, it's great to drive a car with Decent power, 675 horsepower there thereabouts. Mental, oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ, already on the first corner that wants to get sideways. Now, this is a bit different for me. I never normally go on bath first in videos, and I don't think I've ever made a video on Forza 6 on bath first, so yeah, apologies about that, guys. It's great to get onto a fresh track which I haven't driven in a while. Oh my god. This section is an absolute nightmare. I hate it, man. I absolutely hate it. Ooh, Jesus. It's a bit skittish. Let's just say that. It is very skittish compared to other cars that I've driven today, as you would expect, obviously. I'm kind of scared to put my finger all the way down on the accelerator. Because it is pretty... <laughs> it's pretty rapid. Jesus. Ooh. It's like a snake, man. Jesus! Oh. <laughs> That's what happens when you come down from third gear into second gear in this thing. It becomes the drifting animal. My ears are bleeding, it's official. <laughs> Gotta give it something, the brakes are very, very good. Oh god, there we go. Stops in a dime, this thing. Ooh. And then we're back to drift mode again. <laughs> it's nice to jump into these things after driving normal civilised cars, if you know what I mean. Because you kind of forget when you're driving them things that there's a whole other side to the petrolhead world. Rather than just like boring commuter cars. Yeah, it's definitely a car you need to watch the throttle. You really, really need to be gentle on the throttle, but that ain't me. I go by the Clarkson rules of ways to do things. Foot down and power! Power! <laughs> Maybe not at this part of the track, because it's the tight and twisty section. But on the main straight, we must engage the power. Now, if you do control it, like I'm trying to do right now, it is pretty capable. Maybe if I put it up into fourth gear, that would help a bit better. Hey, watch this, into second gear, and then you can automatically feel the oversteer coming. Well, it certainly does live up to its name, the Cougar. 
It's an angry cat. Very, very angry cat. Which will rip your face off at any time given. Remember to break up here, Frankie boy. Remember to break. Jesus Christ, that smoke? Or the fog? Thanks for that. That is very unsettling when you go through there. Especially when you're going at them speeds. Fuck. Oh my god. Can we drift all the way up this and this? Keep it in second. Ugh. I think we can. Holy Jesus. Right, okay, that's a first. <laughs> that's a first. I've never done that before. Whoa, 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 whoa. I did not initiate that drift there. i done it all by itself. God's sake. This is terrifying. If you've not got this DLC yet, guys, I recommend you getting this car and taking it around Bathurst because this is truly something to behold. So that is going to do it for this part of the DLC, guys. Expect to see part two coming either tomorrow or on Sunday. What do I think is the best car that I've driven so far out of the four that I've driven in this episode? Either this thing for sheer thrills and uh, an adrenaline rush, or I know it sounds funny saying this, but the Aztec for pure fun. Seriously, it's not a car to be taken seriously, but if you just want fun, something to chuck around with hardly any horsepower, then go for that. The, the Tiger, the Sunbeam Tiger was quite a good like surprise as well, but the Subaru was probably my, my least favourite. It wasn't really talking to me as much as the other cars. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, then a like would be much appreciated. Just lets me know that you are supporting my videos and you're enjoying them. And thanks for all the support recently. I really do appreciate it. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video of mine coming later tonight. Thank you for watching and peace.